so here are the African violets that are available for sale. There's not a whole lot because it's spring, early, early spring, and they're not doing a lot of shipments right now. So you know, the collection's gonna be pretty limited here. But when you're looking to buy an African violet from a place like Lowe's or Walmart or uh, Home Depot or something, you wanna take a good look at them before you bring them home, especially if you already have violets at home, you wanna be very careful about what you choose. So what are we looking for? So you wanna take a good look at the, the blossom. You're not so much worried about ones that are dried up here because that's gonna happen. You're gonna have plants that have very dried up blooms because you know they're not gonna last forever. What you're really looking for is you're gonna be looking at the leaves, making sure that they're nice and healthy. They feel well watered. They don't have a whole lot of bruising on the outside leaves. Especially here, you, you are going to get some measure of bruising because that's just going to happen in shipment. But what you really want to do is you want to look on the inside of the plant here beyond the blossoms and make sure that the leaves are nice and healthy. You also want to make sure that there is nothing crawling on any of the blossoms. Uh, you don't want to see any bugs of any kind. You don't want to see anything that looks um, that has like legs and that's moving around. If you see any of that, pass it by because you don't need to bring that to your collection. Also, you wanna make sure when you're looking at the leaves, okay, there's a little bit of discoloration there and that's just probably an old leaf. But if you see leaves that have like, kind of like a whitish kind of color to them, that's usually what they call powdery mildew and you wanna stay away from that. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna check the bottom of the plant here. Now. A lot of times you have no holes at the bottom here. This means that this is in a self-watering pot. And that means that you're just going to have to take the planter part out. And all you have to do is just kind of flip this a little bit out of the pocket a little bit here. And you see that the pot is right in here. So you just kind of slip it out of the pot. Like so. And we're just going to check the bottom. Okay, if you see roots coming out of it, that's great That because that means that, you know, it's nice and root bound because African violet likes to be root bound a little bit. But you just want to make sure that there's nothing crawling underneath on the bottom here. And you want to make sure that it looks nice and healthy. So, you know, if it doesn't have, if it has holes in that already, then that's easy to do. If it doesn't, then it's in a self-watering pot, which is actually kind of nice. And again, you're checking for bugs. You also want to Check the soil a little bit, make sure that there's nothing crawling around in there. Make sure that there's no fungus growing in the soil either. All right, make sure that the leaves are nice and healthy. And just kind of do like a quick inspection before. And you know, you're gonna have some broken leaves. That's just gonna happen. You just wanna make sure that the majority of leaves, especially the ones in the center, look healthy. Now here's an example here. I'm not quite sure what that yellow stuff is on the leaf. That could be pollen. Um, that could be just, you know, dirt that dried there. Um, that would be one that I might take a pass at because I'm not quite sure what's going on with that leaf. So you want to take a look at the leaves and, you know, make sure that there's nothing strange going on. But in any case, if you're going to be getting a, and if this is especially true, if you already have violets at home, if you're going to be getting something from like a place like Lowe's, like a Walmart, where they sell lots and lots of plants and they're right beside other house plants and outdoor plants and things like that, um, go prepared. Bring a plastic bag with you, you know, like a Ziploc bag so that you can kind of wrap up your plant after you purchase it and before you bring it inside. That way you're able to contain everything that might be on the plant and then you're able to kind of clean up the plant and keep it in that bag before you bring it inside or before you bring it into contact with some of your other plants.
As soon as you get your new African Violet, see that I have this plastic bag and I also have this holder. Now you, you're not always going to have it nicely packaged here, but I carry a holder just in case I get, you know, one or two or three or four <laughs> new African Violets. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and take this guy, this new guy here, and stick it in the plastic bag. So that way, when I bring it home, so that if I, I inspected it, as you saw, but in case there was any kind of bugs or pests or anything that managed to escape me in that really quick little inspection, then it's trapped in here. I really like McDonald's because they're a garden center, so they're a little bit more careful about their plants than say like a, you know, like a big box, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or even a Walmart would be. So you sometimes get better plants at like a garden center that's specifically dedicated for plants. All right, time to go home. Good morning. 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 Before I start preparing my new violet to join my collection, I've got a little toolkit that I usually have when I'm doing when I'm taking care of those. I'm going to bring down some alcohol, also a bottle of distilled water. I'm not quite sure what you would call this. I actually got this from when I ordered from a um, a website that sells supplies for um, succulents and because um, I needed some soil for one of my succulents and they included this in the shipment. It's really useful for prizing, um, prizing open um, root balls and getting rid of and poking through dirt and things like that. So that's become part of my toolkit from when I'm repotting violet. Uh, an X-Acto knife. I'm also bringing down some of my Bonide Systemic Insect Control. And this is basically, this is the bottle that it comes in. And this basically helps protect your plants from uh, things like uh, aphids, uh, white flies, uh, mealybugs, and um, you know, fungus gnats and things like that. So also bringing down some measuring spoons. And then also, if you want to cover up your work surface, I've got some old newsprint that I let the kids draw on. So I'm gonna bring that down as well. I'll also need to bring some um, some potting soil because when I have new violets that I get right from uh, the garden center or from Lowe's or Home Depot, I usually repot it just to make sure that the soil is nice and clean. So I'm just going to need some additional potting soil. All right, so I've got my toolkit down here. I've got some extra soil and I have the violet that I got this morning. And I got kind of busy today and I wasn't, I'm not able to actually do anything with this guy until tonight and that's one of the cool things about having your new violet in bags because um, if you get busy and you're not able to you know process your plant before you add it your, to your collection this violet will be perfectly happy in this bag for uh, for several days I mean I've had some cases where um, I haven't been able to get to my new violets for, for a couple days and they were perfectly fine in the bag. As long as they're watered, you see there's a little humidity in here. African violets love humidity, so as long as they, um, they're fairly damp before you put them in the bag or um, they've had some moisture in the bag, 
they'll be perfectly fine. You won't have to worry about watering them because the humidity in the bag will help keep them moist and watered. Now, once you get your new violet in your house, the last thing you want, that you wanna do is to plop it right in the middle of your other house plants or your other violets, especially if you have a lot of violets. Um, and the reason for that is you don't know if there's any insects hidden in the violets. You also don't know what the, um, if there's any insects hidden in the soil, hidden in the flowers. Uh, so you don't know what's going on with your violet before you put it in the middle of your collection. This is also why you want to inspect, do a deep inspection of your violet once you get home. And you also want to do it far away from your other house plants and your other violets so that anything that may have potentially gotten into your violet stays here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy out of the bag. Very, very pretty violet. And just do it as carefully as you can. All right, and having it in the bag doesn't really hurt it. Uh, you may bend some leaves and things like that, but that's not gonna hurt it. And we're gonna put this bag aside. First thing we wanna do is we wanna just take a deeper look at the, um, we wanna take a good deeper look at the leaves. Um, now, and the flowers, this may be a little bit troubling. I don't know where this, is. it looks like I'm kind of like a little hole in the flower. It could have been burnt by sun. It could have been burnt because uh, some water got in there. I'm not sure. Uh, there's pests that actually like to chew on flowers and things like that. So we always have to worry about that. There's, you know, some bent leaves, some, the, and you always lose leaves. <laughs> um, that's not a huge deal. And so we just want to take a good deep look and make sure that there's nothing crawling in here. Next thing you'll want to do is you want to take this guy out of its pot very gently and you'll want to take a good look at the roots and what you want to see is you want to see roots that have a lot of white here you want to see a lot of roots and flexible and that they're not dry or anything and you want to make sure that there's quite a bit of them in some cases you'll have roots that are coming out of the bottom out of the bottom of the pot and that's just fine because african violets really like being what they call root bound having a lot of um, roots uh, compacted into one area so what we're looking for is we're trying to look at the roots and we're also trying to make sure that there is um, now if you have any fuzzy stuff here with the root ball that might be a sign of mealybug infestation and that's that's trouble <laughs> so you want to make sure that you don't see that you want don't want you want to make sure that there's nothing crawling in here here in the root ball and it's nice and moist and so it seems like they watered it well and one thing that you'll want to do i'm going to put this temporarily back in the pot and before we go any further, one thing that you do want to do is I always like taking a picture of the violet because what we're going to be doing next, you'll want a picture of what your violet looks like before we go any further. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so now that we've photographed the violet, what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of the pot. We're going to go ahead and we're going to disinfect this pot. Um, notice that there is, so if you look really close, Notice that there, there's dirt in here, but there's also like this kind of really hard whitish kind of stuff. That's usually the salts and minerals from fertilizer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to scrub this out and, and we're just going to give this a good scrub and disinfect the pot. This will help make sure that there is no microorganisms or anything like that in, um, in this pot. So we're going to do that after we do a little bit of grooming. So basically what that means is we're going to start getting rid of some leaves, this, like broken leaves, like this one. And we're just going to pluck them off. Okay, uh, little small leaves like this, get rid of those too. All right, and so any damaged leaves like this one, you can just go ahead and take those off. The way African violets grow, from what I understand, is that they grow in a circular crown type of thing. And if you have small leaves like that, that are growing on the, uh, on the outside row, they really kind of don't do a whole lot for your plant. So it's best just to um, get rid of them. This is something that people who grow African violets call on do, or is called grooming. So you're basically shaping your African violet, you're getting rid of leaves that are, might be too big, leaves that are damaged, ones that are too old, because remember that whatever is on your plant, 
it puts out energy to maintain. So you don't want your plant maintaining like little leaves like this because it really is not doing, from what I understand, it's not really doing anything for your plant. So you want to get rid of those. All right. All right, this one's a little crooked, so I'll just kind of pull that one too. Any kind of leaves that aren't growing straight, you may want to pull off as well. And get rid of this one too. And this is why we put some paper down because this can be a somewhat of a messy process here. So now the next thing you'll want to do, and this may be really, really hard for you to do, we're going to disbud or we're going to remove these flowers and we're going to remove any kind of flower buds that are growing on the plant. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. And, I, and it's really, really hard. And this is also why I told you to take a picture of the, of the plant so that you'll remember what it looks like. Um, why are we taking the flower buds off? You have insects that actually may hide within the flower buds. So one surefire way to make sure that you don't have them is to pluck out the flower and the buds. So I know it hurts your heart to do it. I know it hurts mine to do it, but do not worry. The, bud, the flower buds will, the flowers will come back. If your plant gets destroyed by pests, it won't. So it's the best thing for your plants. And you know, if you do happen to have any kind of creepy crawlies that within these flowers, then you're getting rid of them. You'll also want to get rid of flower buds. So, you know, ones that haven't bloomed yet, like this one, like this one here, you'll get rid of those too. Well, it looks like there's a pollen sack here that fell in here. All right, yeah, here's a, not sure if you can see it, here's a tiny one that's growing, so we can dig that one out because yes, you can have bugs. Ah, here's another one. Yes, right here. Don't know if you can see it, but right here, it's a little one. So we're gonna pull that one out as much as that hurts to do but it's, it ensure, helps ensure that you don't have any additional passengers in your plant. Now that we've got all, and then also another benefit, now that we've gotten rid of the flowers, we can kind of see the shape of the violet a little bit more. So if we need to groom any more leaves off, this one's kind of, this one's kind of crooked. All right, now here's something that might be interesting. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but there's kind of like this whitish type of um, residue on that. That could just be water that has settled on there. But if you have like a white coating on some of these leaves, if you notice, um, I know that I had that on some violets that I had in December, kind of like a whitish coating, that could be what's called powdery mildew. And it's a nuisance. It doesn't really kill, it doesn't really harm your plant. It's somewhat of a nuisance. So if you do happen to get that, you might wanna just get rid of that leaf. If you get it on one of your plants, what you can do is you can take a, a, a cotton swab soak it in um soak it in alcohol and then you can kind of swab that off of the leaf so that's part of the reason why i have the rubbing alcohol here so if i could take uh, take care of those leaves so let's take a look at this shape here i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to groom a bunch of these leaves off and you're probably wondering like why are you scalping your poor violet well don't worry they'll grow better they have less to worry about with all of these leaves here and with all the flowers gone and they'll just grow better leaves and they'll be a little bit and the shape will be more compact. Yeah, I know it looks like I kind of scalped the poor thing, but you know, it has a better shape now and we still have like the little leaves coming in. Okay. All right. So that's how we groom these down. And you know, one thing that I like to do, you may not want to do it all the time. But one practice that I have, especially if I think I'm gonna really like the violet is some of the, the leaves that I've groomed off, I will save to propagate. So, you know, you may wanna put some of these leaves aside. I pulled off a lot of leaves, I know I did, but um, like I said, this is a much better shape and it will grow into a much better shape. And then also it'll fit in the bag um, later when we, put, um, when we bag these up. So I'm gonna put some of these leaves aside because I may, because like I said, a lot of the times I like to propagate the leaves of my new violet so that if anything happens, I have a copy. So now while this is waiting, we're gonna go ahead and wash out this pot. All right, and what I'm doing here is I'm rinsing the excess dirt out of this pot. It'll make a bit of a mess in the sink. If you can do this outdoors, it's all also save dirt in your drain. There shouldn't be a whole lot of dirt in here. 
And then I'm going to fill up the sink with hot water and a bit of dishwashing soap. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scrub out the inside of this pot. Remember before it had some of the, had the, uh, the built up minerals and uh, salts from the fertilizer. So I'm just going to give this pot a nice thorough scrub out. So you want to scrub it really good. If I had a toothbrush, it'd make this part a little bit easier trying to get some of those salts and minerals off the side of the pot. This should do them. Make sure you clean it out inside thoroughly, clean the outside. Make sure that no dirt remains on the pot. I probably should have done this before, but you can also remove labels at this time. This might give me a little bit of trouble. There we go. So any labels you can also remove at this time too that's been on the pot. Or alternately, if you have pots at home, you can use one of your old pots at home, especially if it's already clean and sterilized. I like keeping them in their original pots though. And give this a good rinse. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sterilize this pot. I think the official recipe for this is uh, nine parts water to one part bleach. I'm gonna be honest, I kind of eyeball it. <laughs> because I, I sterilize all this in the sink, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I'm gonna fill this up and I'm gonna get a little bleach. All right, I'm just gonna add a bit of bleach to the water. We're gonna leave this for about 10 minutes. What this will do is it'll make sure that you get rid of any kind of bacteria or organisms that may have been residing in that pot. So about 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I'm gonna put it on my timer here and we'll leave it there to soak. All right, so while we're waiting for the pots to sterilize, this is something that I, I do. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this. I just like labels. <laughs> but uh, you'll wanna be, you wanna kind of name your violet or figure out a way to mark which violet is which, especially if you have more than one violet. Now, if it's not a named violet, like this one does not have an official name, it, um, it's what they call a noid or, you know, a no ID. That means you can name it whatever you want to. So um, while I'm sterilizing that pot, I'm gonna make a label to put on the outside of the pot. And I'm also gonna put the date of when I got this violet. So let's see. And you don't have to create a label. That's just something I do. And I think I'm gonna name this guy Terry. And I'm gonna go ahead and print. And a little label coming out. And the cool thing about putting a label on your pot, again, you can just write it if you want to. I like making a label because, you know, my, my handwriting is terrible. And so the cool thing about labeling your pot is that you'll, you're able to tell which violet is which when it doesn't have any, when it doesn't have any flowers, like right now, it doesn't have any flowers. So you'll be able to tell which one is which. All right, so now while we're waiting on the pot to disinfect, one thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this handy little probe that I got from Bonsai Jack, and I'm gonna start loosening the top soil here. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm gonna start, I'm going to act, when I repot this, I'm going to add some, well, one, I wanna see what's beneath the soil here. And this is great for loosening up topsoil without damaging the roots too much. Okay, and you just wanna be very, very gentle. Um, we've got a broken stem, gonna get rid of that. We don't want, uh, we want to be able to get rid of stems and stuff very close to the main stem. So, oh, and this, this allows you to kind of work the topsoil off because we're going to be adding some of that um, systemic insect control. And so we'll need to loosen up the topsoil some. So, all right, and this also will reveal any kind of, um, huh, interesting, any kind of stems that you didn't break away completely. Remember, you want to make it as close to the main stem as possible when you break it away. Um, this also reveals, huh, looks like, okay, looks like we have what's called the beginnings of a sucker here. 
You see? It's this little tiny plant that's kind of growing here on the main stem. So um, African violets, you can propagate them several different ways. You can propagate them from leaves, and sometimes they spontaneously propagate themselves by having many little plantlets growing from the stem. Now I can either leave this here. Um, I don't often like leaving them, and so this is a small one, so I'm just kind of breaking it off here because if you have too many suckers, it can kind of take energy away from the plant. So I'm going to remove more stuff that I've dug up. Very useful little tool here. And then also if you have to, you know, poke the root ball open a little bit, this is a great tool to do that. And you have to be really gentle when you're doing this because African violets have really, really delicate roots. So don't use a whole lot of, I'm not using a whole lot of pressure for this. All right. Okay, looks like our pot is ready, so I'm gonna go grab that. Drain out all the water, and I'm gonna rinse this pot out. Okay, good rinse and dry. Now you can air dry this if you want to. I'm kind of in a hurry because it's dinner time, <laughs> so I'm just gonna dry this really, really well. Uh, make sure that you rinse it. Whoops, it went flying. Rinse it really well. So that no bleach remains. And then dry it really well. And normally I would air dry this, but I don't like leaving my violet out of its pot for too long. And like I said, it's almost time for dinner. <laughs> so I don't want to take too much longer dealing with this, this little violet here. So and just make sure that all the little nooks and crannies in the pot are dry. Okay, see, looks much better now that it's nice and clean. So I'm just going to fold this over so that we don't have the old soil, too much of the old soil, old, old soil so I'm touching here. And so now I'm gonna put a bit of this a bit of new soil here on the bottom just a bit all right i'm gonna stick this guy back in the pot very gently all right and before we put any additional soil on here we're going to put a little bit of um bonide systemic insect control and just basically like i said this helps control any kind of insects that might have um, gotten on the plant. All right, so my camera decided to stop recording in the middle of me applying my bonide, uh, so, uh, applying my, uh, my crystals. So basically what I did was I applied two and a half teaspoons of the crystals around the base here, and then I covered it up with some additional potting soil. So. Uh, Basically, and when you're putting in potting soil, you just kind of gently put it in. You don't pack it in there. African violet roots are very delicate, so you don't want them to have to go through a whole lot of compacted soil. So you just basically put your crystals around the plant, like um, the soil that you cleared off. You put another top layer of soil here. And then once you're done, you'll want to water your African violet. And I use a little bit of distilled water because I'm not that fond of the water quality here. And what this does is not only will it kind of, you know, pack the soil down a little bit, but it also activates the crystals. The way the bonide works is that the crystals get into the roots of the, um, of the plant and it makes the plant unappetizing for, <laughs> for any kind of pest. So uh, that's how that works. At least that's how I've read that this works. And the amount that you put in here depends on the size of the, size of the plant. So this is about a four inch pot. So I put in about two and a half teaspoons of, um, of crystals here. So again, I just kind of wet this down to activate. And you don't want to water it down too much because if you do a whole big flush of your, um, of your plant, then you might um, wash out some of the active ingredients. So just to start with, I'm just wetting the topsoil just to get things started off with. And after I did that, I went ahead and put the label on for my plant so I know which one is which. 
All right, and so now, also cleaned up my area. Um, you would have seen that if the entire video <laughs> had shot, but um, I cleaned up the area with the additional um, uh, soil and everything. And then I also made sure to disinfect all the tools that I used with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. It may seem like a little bit of overkill, but you, you know, you want to make sure that everything's clean and that you're not bringing in any kind of microorganisms. So this is just 70% um, alcohol and I just wiped down the probe here that I used to loosen up that topsoil. Uh, these leaves I'm going to disinfect and um, prepare for propagation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a plastic bag. I'm not going to use the bag that I carried the plant in because I just disinfected everything. So why put it back in the same bag that I had brought it home in? So I'm just going to use another bag, a clean one, and I'm just going to disinfect that other bag that I used earlier. So, okay, another little gallon bag here. We got a lot of them. Okay, and I'm just going to take this tray and all and stick this in the bag very carefully. And this is much easier now that, you know, a lot of the leaves and the flowers are gone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip it up most of the way, leave a bit of a hole here so I can blow air in the bag. Not only does that inflate it a little bit, but it gets a little carbon dioxide going in here and, you know, plants love their carbon dioxide. And now we're all done. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this plant in the bag and I'm going to put it in a separate room again away from the rest of my violets and the rest of my um, house plants. I have a room upstairs where all of my new violets go in there and I'll leave it in there for about a month or so. Leave this in here in the bag. You come in and you check it periodically. Make sure that there's it stays moist um, and actually I barely have to water these these plants once I water them and put them in the bag because the moisture and the humidity in the bag keeps them watered and they're actually quite happy in there. So one more thing before I go, this is the process I use for when I'm buying violets locally. So um, if I'm going to the garden center or Lowe's or anything place like that, I go through this process when I'm buying violets that are, you know, They've already been shipped to some place. They've likely been, been there for a while. So I use this process for violets I've gotten locally. Now, if I'm getting violets from online um, and they have to ship them to me, um, I do this slightly differently. What I do is I just give them a, you know, I'll, I'll check the roots. I'll take a good look at the leaves. I may get rid of some of the damaged ones, but I don't do a whole lot of grooming. I don't do a whole lot of removing anything. I, what I'll do is I'll check the roots real quick and I'll stick them in the bag and I'll let them rest for about two weeks. Why? Because the plants, when by the time you get um, they get to your doorstep, they might be in a little bit of shock. So it's better to just let them rest for a few weeks and then you can go in and you can do the repot and you can do the grooming and you can do the, the entire rest of the process after they've had a couple weeks of rest. So. You know, you want to use this process for plants that you get locally, you know, again, at a garden center, at a, um, if there's a plant sale at a, um, at a meeting or something like that, plants that probably didn't get shipped through the mail, you'll want to do this process. If you get them through the mail and they've had to, you know, go from one end of the country to the other, give them a couple weeks of rest in a plastic bag, again, in the quarantine room before you go in and do like the disbudding and the radical, uh, leaf removal and you know the repot all right now i'm going because it's dinner time and i'm really hungry all right talk to you later bye